Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 7. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at cameras, we're going to look at animating our own cameras and we're also going to look at a C-sharp script that allows us to switch a camera due to our cutscene that we are creating. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the little bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial in this series and with that in mind let's get creating. So. Let's start with a second camera. Now we actually have, well, theoretically it's going to be our third camera, isn't it? Because we have a camera that's uh, following our player. We have a camera which is ready for the first intro scene of this cutscene. And we're going to have a third camera which we are going to have animated. However, we're going to be a little bit clever with how we animate it. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a little section here where our camera will kind of rotate around it nice and slowly. And we can do that incredibly easy by going game object, 3D object and cube. You're probably thinking, but Jimmy, that's a cube, not a camera. A cube, not a camera. Well, the clever thing is if we decrease the size, so 0.5 by 0.5, 0.5, and what we can do on this cube is right click camera. Now this camera is going to be attached to the cube. It's currently a child object. So cube is the parent, camera is the child. And we just need to get this camera into position where it's looking nicely at the cube. So we can use this camera preview to determine which is going to be just fine for us. So let's rotate on the X so it faces down. And let's also rotate it so as it faces the cube exactly like so. So the idea is this cube will rotate and this camera will move. Theoretically, we're um, animating the cube rather than the camera, but because the camera is attached to it, it will rotate at the same time. To put that into perspective, let's give it a try now. I'm going to disable the camera here and disable our player up here by ticking this little box. And what we'll do is we will go to make sure we have cube selected and press play. And we want to rotate on the Y. So we can rotate like so. We can see that's how the camera is going to work. So we can rotate like so. In doing so, I've just noticed as well, we may need to actually attach a wall here because if we rotate too much, we can see this right here. So it's up to you how you want to handle it. Uh, I guess what I might do is take the floor, hold control, press D to duplicate, bring it out. Same with the wall, hold control, press D, duplicate, bring it out. And same with the roof here. Remember, I've said it before, I'll say it again, if the camera never sees it, then it doesn't matter what it looks like because, again, the camera never sees it. So now, this will rotate nicely. So, let's get this into position now and let's get this animated. So let's take the camera. Uh, probably zoom out just a little bit more, maybe move it around just a little more and rotate on the Y a little bit more. There we go. So now let's right click, rename this cube. Let's call it uh, second cam. But while we're on that, let's rename the first one to first cam. And I'm going to leave it deactivated, but I'm going to drag and drop this now next to second cam so they all stay together so drag and drop to here and you'll notice it's right if you have a nice long blue line all the way across the hierarchy that means it's moved into a different position if for example you were to do it and it highlights a particular object it means that you're then going to put that as a child object into something else so we don't want that right now we want to make sure it is a line so it moves position in the hierarchy so, second cam. How do we make this animated? Well, let's go to our project window down here. Right click, create folder. Let's call this animations. And within here, I'm going to have another folder. And I'm going to have this named as intro scene. So everything we create animated wise in this first initial scene is going to be in here. Again, it's about keeping things neat and tidy. So let's go to this animation tab with second cam selected. So make sure we have this selected and click on animation. What we need to do now is click on create and we create an individual animation clip. So we can just call this second cam rotate. 
and click Save. You'll be presented with a load of lines, add property, a couple of different play, pause, back, whatever buttons. All we need to do is press the record button right here. So we're working in 60 frames a second. We can see that right here, samples 60. That means 60 frames a second. Now what we need to do is set the initial keyframe, i.e. the starting position of this particular object. So that will be the rotation. We're only dealing with rotation on this animation. So make sure you're set to zero here. And what you need to do is here on the rotation on Y, set that to one and then set it back to zero. What that does is set that first keyframe right here of zero on the Y rotation. And we can see that right there. Also, it doesn't matter too much about X and Z because, well, if you're animating on X axis or Z axis, that's entirely up to you. I'm just going to do it on the Y axis for now. So I want this camera to pan around this particular section here for, let's say, how long? 10 seconds. So we're working 60 frames. So that is going to be the 600th frame. So frame 600 is where we're going to do the next motion. So type 600, press enter. And what we need to do is move this into a position that we deem acceptable by the 600th frame. In that case, we need to rotate all the way here. So let's say by 600 frame, we want it to be about 27. So you can either rotate to 27 here, or you could manually type 27. At this point, press the record button again, and that stops and saves the animation. That animation is now saved. So back to the project window, and then let's turn off the mesh renderer for second cam, just so we don't see it. And now if you could imagine <clears throat> excuse me, right in this spot here, we have, you know, a guy sitting on a chair with a bag on his head, uh, which is what we're going to do, by the way, um, because this is GTA, it's the sort of thing you would see. Uh, so if you could imagine that being the case right here, this is what we'd see. So let's press play now, and we can watch this animation take place. There we go. So by the time we get to the 10 second mark, it repeats itself. So we've dealt with the animation component. Now let's deal with the animator component. So by default, it does attach animator. And you'll notice there's not as much to it as there is with animation. Reason being is because the controller holds all the animations of a particular object. So for example, if we double click the second cam controller right here, so it's actually called second cam dot controller it will open up the animator up here. And we can see, if we move our mouse around, the second cam rotate is there and that's attached to it. So we can actually call that animation via a C-sharp script. So we're going to do just that. Let's head back to our scene view. And now let's head down to our script folder. Right click, create a new folder. And we'll call this intro scene. So every script that's relevant just to this scene is going to be contained within here. So right click, create C sharp script, and I'm going to have this called a01 underscore cam switch. And hit enter, and let's open it up in Visual Studio. So what this script is going to do is it's going to allow us to switch from one camera to another during this cutscene without actually, you know, being a little bit too dramatic as it were. So let's set up the scene first before we start any scripting because we want this first camera to be there and we want this second camera to then basically play when it activates. But we're going to do something a little bit different with it because if we go on to it and we need to basically make sure that this animation that we had right here. So in intro scene, second cam animation, we need to untick loop time. And basically it's going to play on its own, but we can call that again if we want to. But we will get into that a little later on because we can basically make it zoom in, zoom out, do whatever we need to do. But we're going to start simple and build our way up from there. So second cam, turn off. 
So what we need to do is in A01 cam switch, let's start by getting rid of void update because we don't need it. And let's get rid of any annotations. We'll keep void start because we do need it. So we need to declare two cameras in this. So firstly, public game object. So any object within the scene is a game object, whether that is a camera, whether that is a model, but literally anything is a game object. And we'll call this first cam semicolon. So that will be our first camera that sees our character walking across the screen. So public game object, and then we have second cam, obviously the camera we've just created. Now, although we're going to have void start, we're going to use something called I enumerator. The reason we're doing this is because we want to control time and space around us, specifically the amount of time that it takes for the second camera to activate. Now, we can't do that in a void method. We have to do it in an I enumerator. I'll explain a little bit more as we go on. So firstly, let's type I enumerator. And if you have any problems, with any script here, remember you can go to the website, download an assets, GTA series, and you can download it there under tutorial number seven. And now you can call this anything you want, literally anything. You could call it, I don't know, green wall. You could call it black hat, whatever you wanted. But I'm gonna actually call it something relevant and I'm gonna call it cam switcher and then open close bracket and open curly bracket. So you can see, this is how it's going to work. It's similar to what we've done here with a void start or void update. Initially, you'll see the name of it underlined in red. Reason being is when we actually wait for a specific period of time in Unity, this will become normal. So what we want to do is as we start the game, we'll have cam one active. So that means that we need to turn it off after let's say seven seconds so enough time for our character to walk across the screen so yield return new now what this does is enables the script to realize that we are basically going to wait and because we're waiting we type wait for seconds in brackets we put the number seven because i said we're going to wait for seven seconds if you want to wait for longer Obviously, that will be higher, lower, then again, lower. And then semicolon. So after that, we need to have second cam dot set active and in brackets true and semicolon. So remember, case sensitivity is crucial. We have set active with a capital S, capital A. And if we've done that right, then true will be highlighted blue. So that's going to happen and then instantly in the same frame we need to turn the first camera off. So it's the same line of code but false instead of true. So first cam dot set active and in brackets false. Close bracket semicolon and then we need to basically do the rest as we build it. So for now this script will do just as it is just need to add in here starting the coroutine so this enumerator is classed as a coroutine and like i said we could only wait in coroutines we can't do it in a, a void start just because c sharp doesn't like it so we need to put in here start co routine and in brackets the name of the routine here the enumerator which is cam switcher open close bracket close bracket semicolon and save that script so it's only a short script this time but it does a lot in terms of what happens in the scene so let's put this into practice now we're going to have a single object which contains all the sequences that's going to occur in this scene so game object and create empty now this is just a completely empty game object with nothing attached to it at all so we need to add the components, i.e. the scripts ourselves. So let's right click and rename and call this sequence holder. And then we can drag and drop this intro sequence script onto sequence holder right there. And you'll see over here, 
that we have these two game objects. And remember, we did on Contract Killer, we had something very similar there. But we're going to deal with something a little different here because we have two game objects. So obviously, first camera, drag and drop onto first cam. Second cam, drag and drop onto second cam. Right there. And I think I should probably rename this to actually be consistent. So first camera, second camera. And you'll notice that even if you change the game name, the object, it'll still change over here. So it's all relative. If we were to change first camera to, I don't know, level set, it would change over here to level set as well. So they do always link to each other. So you don't need to worry about that. So let's save our scene now and let's watch this in action. So if we were to imagine our scene has loaded, our character has uh, just finished walking across here. We get to the second bit of the scene, which is right there. And that comes across and it shouldn't loop back on itself now. It should just stop. And it does. So that gives us an opportunity to either play the animation again if we wanted to. Or we could always just kind of switch to a different camera. So not 100% sure what we're going to do on this because we're still building this scene up as we go along. But, you know, we'll get there in the end. So next tutorial, what we're going to take a look at is a fade in screen. We we'll look at some UI, we'll look at a skybox. And if we have time, we'll also look at changing the lighting within the scene itself. So next tutorial, I don't want to drag on too long, but there's quite a bit that I start. I want to start getting through now because, you know, we're already coming into the eighth tutorial. So there's lots I really want to go through. So guys, until that next tutorial, you build up your camera sequence for the first two cameras or three or four, if you want to, we will do more cameras. Don't worry. Uh, and yeah, I will see you in the next tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.